So uh, my name is Ilya. I'm the head of the Human Computer Interaction Study Program at Tallinn University. And together here uh, is also my colleague Sonia, who will do the introduction for interaction design, and also Andreas. So both of them are uh, managing the interaction design master's program. And also our students, Gabriela and John, who will give you a, a little brief personal introduction about their study experience. Okay, so um, I'll try to share my screen now. Um, and we'll go through the through the presentation. So I hope everything works nicely. Uh, I'll try to go full screen so that everyone can see. Okay, so I hope that you can see the slides. If not, please let me know, but I really hope everything is working. And um, briefly to introduce the HCI study program to you. So in the, Human Computer Action Study Program, we emphasize technology for the benefit of people. That's our kind of tagline, that's our motto, and that's, that's how we try to also uh, approach things on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what are we about? Uh, we focus on three main things. Um, our master's program is very much research-driven. It's uh, informed by our latest Mm, state-of-the-art research that we do within our um, group and uh, that's that's why also most of our uh, teachings most of the most of the lectures most of the classes that were organized most of the material that we share with our students is not from the book it's from our um, ongoing state-of-the-art research that's something you cannot kind of go to a library and read about that's something that we share with you uh, on our um, uh, fr a fresh experience. We focus on new and emerging technologies, so we like to think of ourselves as working on things that will only become commercially available or mainstream in five to ten years. So that's also kind of one of the our focus areas. That's what we kind of try to to uh, to play with technologies that will only go mainstream in the future. And um, we're also very much theory based and reflective, which again, I guess feeds back to this research-driven approach. So most of the discourse that we have uh, in, the, in the various uh, sessions, in the various modules um, is based on uh, theory. We, when we engage in hands-on activities in the design process, we'd like to be very much reflective and critical about what we do and how we put together and what values we use. So um, I think it kind of, these three things, these three facets permit uh, very much what we do in the program. If we look into the background of um, the students um, that you might eventually encounter in the program, then it's very diverse um, because the, the field of HCI uh, is also very diverse. Um, so I tried to point out four main areas of where people come from uh, to study with us. Uh, it's mainly computer science, design, psychology, and anthropology, but they're also kind of surrounding disciplines such as economics and human factors, sociology, language, semiotics, engineering. So it's a very mixed crowd of people, some with um, a more engineering or more technical background, some with a more uh, artistic or design-based background, some from social or behavioral sciences. So different understandings, different schools of thought, different approaches to um, design research and um, technical implementation. And we put all of you uh, and all of them together to make cool stuff happen. Um, let's see, oops, sorry. So um, how are our studies organized? How would we go about uh, approaching things? Um, well, we go through several stages of there are several different types of activities from emphasizing and researching to defining uh, the problem statement through constraints and guidelines and then ideation and brainstorming and then modeling and prototyping, testing and evaluating and finally publishing and producing. So uh, in the course of the studies, you would cover the whole range from, uh, from contextual inquiry and, and background research to creating um, or defining the design challenge or the problem statement, uh, finding solutions, exploring alternatives, how to implement things, and then evaluating with users, assessing, and finally producing the final outcome. Um, the course overall, the program is is a two-year program, four semesters, and this is how it's mainly structured in the, in the main category. So if some of you have already 
looked into the more formal program description, then you might see that we start with um, university-wide courses, which is like a foundation. Uh, and the, the course that we, we have there is the, is the um, interdisciplinary course that we run throughout the, the, the university. So all you can interact with people from all sorts of backgrounds and uh, programs from out the university. And then there's um, a set of harmonization courses. So depending on which background you come from, either design or technical background or um, maybe social behavior sciences, we will look into what skills you're missing, either design uh, or programming development or both. And then you get the chance to get uh, those skills. Uh, and also there's an intensive uh, foundations um, section, which teaches you a lot about the theoretical landscape of HCI, the different research methods that we use, um, and how to go uh, putting together a, uh, your initial research proposal for your master thesis. Then there's a set of core courses, and then um, two selection modules, either on shaping experiences or shaping society, depending on which way you want to go, either focusing on the micro or the macro level of um, designing interactions. And then there's training, um, either through internship or training abroad, and um, a set of electives that where you can choose from a set of different courses that we offer to kind of create your own uh, unique profile and path. And then finally, we wrap off the course um, with a master thesis project, which is kind of a project you work on um, on a selected topic with your supervisor to build um, very nuanced and detailed expertise in a certain area that of your interest. So um, on the next slide, as soon as it opens, um, you will see the breakdown of the different courses throughout throughout the semesters. So. Um, like I mentioned, the, the, the program is a four um, semester long, two year uh, course. Um, in the first semester, we start with this harmonization or we call them up to kind of getting your skills up to date, basically courses. Then there's a set of foundational courses which lasts for the first year. Um, the core courses are the core courses to the HCI uh, curriculum, uh, mainly focusing on kind of the foundations of HCI. Um, and also this shaping experience and shaping society module, which is kind of, you can choose which path you want to go through. Uh, in the second semester, you also take uh, these university-wide courses. And then the third semester is what we call our mobility window. So it's either you take a set of selectives or you actually can choose to go abroad on uh, an Erasmus exchange to study in a, in a different university in a different country. And the fourth semester is actually devoted to the master thesis. So this is um, roughly um, how, um, you, your studies could pan out over the four semesters. And you can see here a more detailed view of uh, how these courses are organized, kind of similar to what I was showing to you before. So um, there's foundations, harmonization, shaping experiences in society, electives that you can take in the first semester. In the second semester, we mainly focus on an integrated project, which is a very hands-on activity, which where you go exactly through this process of coming up with a design challenge or researching the background and then finishing off with a working prototype that has been thoroughly tested with users. Finally, in the third semester, you go for this kind of studies abroad or internship in a company, free electives, and then you finish off with a master thesis. Okay, so um, to tell you more about the master thesis, because that's, uh, again, related to this research-driven part of our studies, um, we try to go for either applied or basic research. Um, so you can do a hands-on project developing or designing something, or you can actually go for basic research and go maybe more into theory building and uh, creating different models. We usually go for a dual supervision model because um, we try to go for thesis topics that are very much multidisciplinary. So bringing in or combining several different uh, areas of expertise. And uh, we frame them within our current research teams, which are four. I won't go through too much detail on that. Uh, we have these uh, topics also posted on our website, but we work across four main areas, design theory and methodology, user experience, um, neurophysiology and body centric computing. So some of these are overlapping and uh, com complementary. Um, and depending on where your heart uh, lies closer to the most, um, you can choose and position yourself within one of these topics. and. What you can see here on the slide are some subtopics that kind of try to illustrate what these 
um, work within one of these larger areas could be about. So all of our students um, eventually need to position themselves and their master thesis within this within these four topics or within one of these four topics okay so um we also have um a very nice infrastructure to support our activities uh we have in our school in our uh, institute we have five labs but we're mainly using uh, the first three ones um most of our activities are based in the interaction design lab where we go into kind of this we have a space, an open space, which kind of facilitates all of these different conceptualization and prototyping activities. And then there's a companion smaller lab to it where we run controlled lab experience um, using different uh, equipment that I'll show you uh, in a moment. And then we also use the hardware lab where we mainly go into body centric and um, yeah, um, uh, on, on body computing. Uh, we also have the software lab and game lab, which also some of our students use but mainly these three ones um, that I um, kind of highlighted here. Okay, so some of the tools that we use, we go from paper-based to very hands-on uh, microcontroller and electronics uh, uh, materials. Uh, we go and explore different types of devices and different types of modalities from wearables to uh, virtual reality, to, to touch screens, to motion sensors and game-based interactions. Um, to physiological computing, such as eye tracking, um, emotions, emotional state tracking, to finally tapping into your brain and actually looking into how um, your brain reacts to certain things, um, reacts to stimuli, reacts to um, interactions that are being kind of um, designed, and also how you in can interact with the system through your brain. So kind of this goes both ways. So as you can see, a whole range of different uh, materials and devices and equipment that we use, all of this is available in the labs that I mentioned to you before. Um, and finally, um, we also have different kind of tasters or flavors of our um, uh, of the courses that we teach in the program in different formats. One of them, uh, the most, maybe the oldest one or the more mature one is the experimental inter interaction design course, where we actually go into a two week intensive um, process of conceptualizing, designing and prototyping uh, body centric uh, interactions. And this is just some examples with students coming with necessarily no um, design or development background and in two weeks building working prototypes with Arduinos and microcontrollers. So this is just a glimpse of what we do in, in just two weeks. Um, you can read more about it either um, on the summer school or winter school variant because we run this course twice a year. We also run the annual World Usability Day event, uh, which I think the last edition, it, it happened, took place on November 22 in the Tallinn Creative Hub. And uh, it, um, it brought together around 500 people from the Baltics and the neighboring countries such as Finland, uh, Russia, Sweden. People come from all the, the region to, to join for this one day full um, event of, of um, conferences and presentations and also um, a, an accompanying two or three days of um, uh, hands-on workshops. So this is kind of a, also a very big event that we're hosting every year. And you can read more about this here um, on the website um, wood.ee, worldusabilityday.ee. Um, and I think that's it. Um, that's what briefly I wanted to tell you about the program. I'm exactly 15 minutes, uh, so I'm on time and I'll hand it over to Sonia and Andreas. Okay, uh, thank you, Ilya. And uh, I would like to welcome everyone to this information session first. And uh, I will be uh, introducing you the Interaction Design Master uh, online. Mm -hmm. Can you go yes, to the I'm, next slide? Yeah, please? just tell me when to, to switch slides. Yeah. So basically, this master is offered since 2016. It's a 100% online study program. It's run in English. It's a joint program. So it's run in cooperation between two universities, Tallinn Universities, where I'm the head of the program, and Cyprus University of the Te Technology, where Andreas Papalas is the, the head of the program. So we, we have two heads. Uh, thank you for this program. 
Um, the aim of the master basically is, is similar to the HEI master, is to edu educate and train students who have a strong interest in interaction design. Also, we emphasize technology from the benefit of people. So in terms of position, can you switch please, Vinny? Really? Mm -hmm. Uh, positioning this this master, um, it it has uh, uh, it has um, uh, been um, created from a, from an existing program that is human computer interaction, and it overlaps also with this program some of the the, the courses, and also some other courses are are uh, gathered from Cyprus University of technology and their experience in this in this program so you can see here that it kind of overlaps in this in this sense Tallinn University and Cyprus University and gains from this both universities experiences so the next one please so in terms of uh, fields and or areas we we uh, we prime the computer science the business and the design area so all of these overlapped a little bit here. Next, please. Yeah. About the program. So in the, it's the same as the HI program. So four semesters, two, two years course. In the first semester, full semester that runs from September until December, we have a set of foundation courses, core complementary courses and practice and specialization. The, all of them are compulsory. So foundation courses are like courses like design theory, methodology, research methods, foundations of human computer interaction. The core courses are like uh, courses like uh, interaction design methods, complementary is prototyping and practice and specialization is individual subjects where we invite students to select a set of um, individual subjects to study that uh, they would like to complement in their program. The next, during spring from January to June, we also have some set of core courses, complementary courses and practice and specialization. So the core courses here are development of interactive systems, user experience evaluation, field research methods in HCI. The complementary are current topics in human interaction, uh, in human computer interaction, universal design. The practice is, uh, it's basically a practice course where you are invited to uh, to practice about uh, the interaction design. Thank you. On semester three and semester four, second year, so fall and spring, we have uh, uh, a set of core courses, two, and the foundation courses uh, so in semester three. So the core course is interaction design project. Uh, where you put in practice everything that you learn on the first uh, first year and the foundation course is your master thesis seminar where you are helped to set up the main research problem and to guide you to to uh, to to for, throughout the second uh, the second the semester four that is the master thesis next so this is more or less what uh, what it, it is the distribution of courses throughout the, the uh, four semesters. So um, we have core courses, master thesis, foundation courses, and practice and specialization courses. Mode uh, of delivery. So everything is online. We use mo mainly Google tools, Google apps, and uh, Google Classroom. Um, we have a combination of a synchronous and synchronous communication. It's mainly a synchronous. We have a couple of synchronous communication, at least one or two per course. Um, but it depends on the, the course content and the module of the lecture. The deliver of the assignments and, uh, and the pro uh, projects are bi-weekly. So you will, set, uh, you will have a set of assignments every two weeks. The assess, assessed is, uh, assessment is based highly in, in the assignments and project work. 
At the end of the semester, we invited you to present verbally in a synchronous session uh, and examine you throughout the, 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 the course. Uh, we are starting this, uh, this program in September 2020. So, as uh, so I was saying, throughout the years of experience in offering this course, both face to face and online, we we believe that we need to limit the number of students. So this, uh, this online course has a small number of students because we want to mentor, mentoring students one, uh, maybe, and do one-to-one -one, uh, advising. We also want to make it flexible because the main target of students are the ones that are working students. So that's why we offered the course to be, done, to be run as part-time or full-time. If, if you do it a part-time, you will do three more or less an average of three courses per semester. If you do it as, uh, full time, you will do six courses per semester. Regarding the lectures and the students. So these are the set of lectures for uh, Tallinn University, Ilya, Sonia and David Lamas. And the lectures from uh, the Cyprus University of Technology, Andreas, Alexandros, and Panagotis. Of course, we have additional extra support, but these are the main lectures. Um, regarding the students, uh, we have a unique and multinational um, set of, uh, of students. So uh, we have three students joining us from. 36 different countries. And you can see the set of countries here. The total of, uh, of students that we have right now is 98. And by the end of this year, we expect to have uh, 21 students finishing the program. So if you want to know more about it, you have some testimonials here that you can go and read about it. But uh, Sean will, will also be here to uh, kind of uh, present her, his view of the, the program. He's finishing this semester, so he has a lot of things to say to you, yeah. Okay, so. That's it from, from my side. Mm -hmm. Thank you, William. Thank you so much, Sonia. So now I'll first invite Gabriela to maybe share some of her experiences. Gabriela is from Brazil originally, but now living in Estonia for almost one year and studying with us in the HCI master's program. So maybe Gabriela, you can say a couple of words. I think I need to unmute you first and... Hello, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Yeah. So uh, thank you for the introduction, Ilya. So yeah, I'm Gabriela. I'm originally, originally from Brazil. Uh, I must admit that at first that was, I thought I would not really fit in the uh, human computer interaction program because I'm from the, from I have a background in communication, but uh, I, as Ida explained, it's a very uh, interdisciplinary course. It's been really a very nice experience so far. We have a very mixed group. So uh, the same way that I'm, I'm from communication, I have people from psychology, people from computer science and yeah, design other, uh, yeah, other, other backgrounds. And it's been really good because we can really uh, discuss from different perspectives how, how to move on with technology. So I think one of the, the first things that he mentioned that we the goal of the program is to create technology for the benefit of people. I think that's really, uh, that's really what we discuss here. Uh, we have a lot of uh, critical, we develop a lot of critical thinking on, on the topic and also have the chance to have some hands-on experience. So now I'm, I'm finishing the first year, so we are actually still engaged in this uh, integrated project and it's been a lot of uh, work really in, in developing something. So uh, unfortunately we couldn't use all the resources that we have in the lab that he also presented. We, we had the chance to use some in the previous semester but uh, we 
managed to do everything online, but it's nice to know like everything is really there, we can really use. And I think one of the things that I would like to highlight is that all the teachers from, from the beginning of the, pro the program, they're very open to discussions and to, to really hearing what people have to say and helping you out to develop the, the ideas that you have. So, yeah, I think, I think it's a good way or it's a very good program uh, regardless or for different objectives. So I'm really more into this conceptual, uh, I'm interested in this conceptual area of how to, how to make better technology. So I think that's, that's really interesting for me, but I see that also people who are more into developing and creating, they also have been uh, learning and growing a lot in their practice. And of course, I also uh, managed to develop my skills on that uh, considerably. So, yeah, I think that's, that's what I can say so far. Also, overall about the university, it's been, I mean, it's not very big university. I think it's a good size. So we have uh, enough space. We have this, or this lab that we can use. It's uh, very, very helpful. It's a place where we can actually make contact with the teachers, with other students from other years. So it's, uh, it's very good for the development of, of our skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Gabriela. So now maybe Sean can share some of his experiences in the online masters, please. Okay, hi, um, everyone from Singapore. So, um, I come from a background in uh, art and computer science, so I'm a dual role uh, designer developer. So, um, I guess what made me want to do the program is, uh, it would be nice to have a formal grounding in um, design for computer things. Uh. So, that's why I did it. Uh, I guess most of you guys will be will, will be like me, we are working professionals. So after a while, uh, design principles, everything they get, they become intuitive. So the whole way the course was uh, delivered, I mean, you get it every two weeks, you have an assignment and it's more or less practical. So it, it, it works for me. It is not, um, it didn't stress me out theoretically that much, which I'm not so good at. Um, Time-wise, it was great as well because I'm in Singapore and they are over in Estonia. So the way they deliver um, asynchronously uh, does work for me. So what I do is I, I finish work, then I do my assignments, then we, we turn in and then we get uh, feedback. And then at the end of everything, you do a presentation and then you get the module over and done with. Um, what else can I say? Overall, the lecturers are great. They know what they're doing, really. Sonia is fantastic. Um, mm, what else? Maybe I think Sean. That's, <laughs> maybe he can ask me some questions later on. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe you could mention just uh, briefly your experience with working with colleagues from all over the world. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, how, yeah, yeah, How has that been? Um, it's it's good to be honest. A lot of the people you'll be working with are really experienced. So we had we had Joa who was already a UX architect that was like several levels above me. So it's just really aspiring, inspiring to see him work. Uh, we had Raimonda who was already senior management and um, it's, it's, um, it's overall quite a good experience, I would say. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's, it's great, it's great, I like it. Thank you so much, Sean. So maybe some, uh, some of our participants will have questions for you later on. So be ready to answer those. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm question for Gabriela. Yes. Uh, what is your reason for studying uh, and uh, what do you want to achieve with this?
Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, I was muted. Yeah. So, well, I didn't mention before, but I'm from communications, but I used to work with advertising. So, uh, my initial motivation it was actually to try to move to the UX field. To, uh, I sort of so in Brazil, it's not such a formal field, and I wanted to. Uh, get some formal education that would actually put me closer to that. So that was my initial goal. That's why I started. But now I'm really interested in getting more involved into this more theoretical or research uh, side of uh, human computer interaction. So now I'm considering maybe uh, trying to focus more on, on research and maybe following a bit further into the academic life. So uh, I'm not sure yet, but I feel like I, I get, I'm getting enough skills to, to follow both paths, if, if I decide later. Mm -hmm. so, so, Sean has already touched upon this, although uh, in the format of the online studies. And the face-to-face -face studies are similar, so it's um, bi-weekly courses. We meet every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So you need to plan for full days uh, from morning till evening. It's roughly, I guess, uh, six hours uh, uh, of classes, six to eight hours, depending on how intensive the day will be. And then you have two weeks in between to work on your assignments, either individually or in group. The labs, as Gabriela mentioned, are um, open to students 24 seven. So um, usually you can apply for a student pass and then you can uh, go and work in the labs whenever you want to. If you prefer early morning or late at night or on the weekends, uh, it's totally up to you. So it's it's whenever the university is open, it's almost almost open every, all the time throughout the year. I think um, you are welcome to come uh, at your own time, at your own schedule, and and work here. Okay. And I also wanted to add that in your online course, the, usually we set the deadline on Tuesdays, so you have uh, the weekend to also to work on, the, on your assignments. So you expect to deliver something, something in the end of the day of Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Okay, so finally someone asked the question we have been all been waiting for, what about COVID and what do we do about studies in, in autumn? So the answer is that um, we don't have an official answer yet. We're actually waiting for that from the studies department. But of course, we have been talking about it. Um, for the online masters, it's not a problem because it's all online. For the face-to-face -face masters, um, I think, and this is kind of not the official statement yet, but that's something that we're planning to do uh, at the moment is to go with blended mode of studies. So those who are able to come here to uh, Estonia for the beginning of the school year uh, are more than welcome to come. And hopefully the health situation will, will be uh, allowing us to, to actually meet uh, face to face. At least there are kind of indications uh, of that. Uh, and those of you who for different reasons uh, won't be able to come by September will be able to join online uh, in our session. So we will have um, kind of a parallel schedule of online sessions to complement our face-to-face -face studies. So maybe in kind of during group work presentations, you'll be joining in um, online uh, uh, together with our face-to-face -face kind of, uh, students and, and contributing and, and participating in that. Um, I guess like you saw from the presentation of the online masters, we have extensive experience of teaching both face-to-face -face and online. So it shouldn't be uh, much of an issue of going with this blended mode of studies. similar to the HCI, so it's a multidisciplinary program. It's not, uh, we don't demand so high, uh, in, so high uh, uh, developing and uh, programming skills. So our level of programming on online master is lower than the other face-to-face, -face, but the skills are multidisciplinary. So you can, can come from different fields and you will work together and you will share the experience regarding this. I hope that uh, I will I manage to answer to your question. Yeah, maybe I, I can just comment on that as well because uh, um, the the development course was uh, I was teaching it before, 
So what we're planning for the new edition is to actually have a, a full support for you to get you started started with kind of basics of developments uh, and to teach you how to actually put stuff together. So we'll walk you through the process. There will be um, materials, there will be full support um, uh, so that by the end of the day, you can, you can actually make stuff happen even if you don't have the technical skills. So I think it should be quite nice. Um, yeah, of course, we expect to have some technical skills with dealing with, uh, with uh, all the necessary tools for uh, for learning online, like computer using the internet. But this is the basic ones. Yeah. 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 True. Okay. So Emma is asking about the programming skills for HCI masters. Again, Sonia already touched on it. The the background of students is very mixed. It's very multidisciplinary, um, and that's why we also offer this. Uh, harmonization courses. Mm, the harmonization course for programming skills is called end user computing and it fits nicely. Uh, it starts in the first semester and fits nicely into the development of interactive systems in the second semester. So you'll go from the full range of kind of really basics of programming to putting more complex stuff together like Android applications, um, eventually also getting introduced to to Arduino and uh, microcontrollers, so um, you'll get the full support. So the only thing that we ask from you is kind of motivation and interest to get started with this, uh, even if you don't have the, the, the background, uh, being open and being willing to learn new stuff and then we'll kind of walk you through the whole process. So, so uh, it's, it's mainly half half. We have a little in Italian university. We have uh, uh, a bit more credits, so uh, we we uh, we run. Uh, uh, it's a, a program that uh, it's fifty one percent from Italian university and fifty percent from uh, Cyprus University of Technology. So it's one percent more from Italian university. Mm -hmm. So. Well, so far, I've been, I chose to dedicate only to studies now, but several of our class, of my classmates are already working or already found something. So there are several, several startups and companies in, in Estonia. I haven't really uh, researched much in the other Baltic countries, but I, I believe that it, it's quite similar. I think overall in this uh, HCI field, either for more to the side of programming and computer science and also for the side of design, there's quite a good demand, I would say. There's, there's people needed, like skilled people needed in this regard. So it's, I, I foresee good opportunities. There, there are um, possibilities to work. There are also even within the university, sometimes we, are, we get contacted about opportunities for, for work or for projects. So, uh, yeah, and overall, I would say there it's a promising field here. Yeah, uh, and it's also a challenge for us teaching stuff because our students I, um, go start working um, either by the end of first semester or by the end of the first year and then we need to chase them <laughs> so it's, it's a challenge we're kind of happy that they can find a job but also not happy when they get distracted with the job and not focusing on their studies so that's it's kind of it's it's um, it's kind of two sides to the to the coin so uh, but i would say in general there are good opportunities in estonia maybe not immediately in the first semester but as you start getting some hands-on skills, then experience shows that by the end of the first academic year, most of the students can get a job, maybe on a slightly lower level initially, but then gradually progressing to higher levels um, to eventually some of our alumni uh, having very nice positions uh, in, in the, in the uh, IT, IT sector in Estonia. So uh, most of them are, are then working. It's, and then it's like Gabriela said, it's your decision whether you want to kind of not work deliberately because you want to focus on your studies or you want to combine somehow. So there's, I think there are good opportunities eventually. We have two types, uh, two, two 
types of admissions. We have a documentation admissions where we go throughout all the documents that you submit and we assess you in base of the documents and then we do an interview, an interview admission. So this is the test that uh, maybe we are talking about, um, Ilya. Is, isn't mm -hmm. it, it from an HCI point of view? Yeah, so there's a there's a process that you need to submit. It's it's your CV, motivation letter, and portfolio, and then we, in the admissions interview, um, we spend half an hour per each candidate, uh, actually meeting you um, online, uh, synchronously, and then we kind of go over your um, interests. Uh, we ask you about um, eventually the the topic that you would like to work on for your master thesis, um, your skill set, um, some projects that you have worked on in the past. Um, and yeah, we try to assess kind of your plans and your motivations for the future. So that's that's basically what the admissions is all about. Well, um, for designers, we really go um, very deep into the methodology and theory of design, uh, the different theoretical frameworks, um, how to systematically approach the design process, um, and of course also the technical side of things. So uh, if you're lacking the technical skills, then we would, of course, expect you to invest more into learning the basics of programming, how to put stuff together so that uh, eventually this integrated project that Gabriela mentioned that she's now working on with her colleagues, um, in the second semester in spring, you would be ready to actually actively contribute to, to building stuff. Um, so that's, that's kind of the learning curve that uh, you as designers uh, would go through. Um, what I did was I was studying full time and I took the uh, program full time as well. So it definitely can be done. But I think what most of the other students did is that they, <coughs> they took three modules and then they, they worked at the same time. So um, it's really up to you to judge how, how much load you can handle, I guess. But it, it can be done. I did full-time work and I did full-time studies. So hope that answers your question. Uh, we, yeah. we also advise students to, uh, to try and see how much uh, courses they can handle. They, they can start with three, enrolling three courses. And then if they feel that they, they can handle a little bit more than then the next semester, they can enroll in four or six. It depends on them. The same, the other way also works. So if you, if you feel that uh, you cannot manage the, the workload, then uh, you cannot let us know. And uh, you can reduce the, the amount of courses that we enroll in the, the next semesters. Uh, the courses are mainly full semester um, based in HCI, uh, although in some cases we have intensive courses for lasting for one or two weeks, but these are mainly exceptions. Uh, normally the courses last for 14 weeks, that's the length of the semester, but uh, which means that we will have uh, an average of uh, seven to eight um, contact sessions, so one session uh, every two weeks. Um, so this is the average schedule for the courses. clarify as well that for the, the online master in, in interaction design you don't need to submit a portfolio you can but it's not obligatory so for those who apply for the online master they need to submit their their cv just to clarify yeah and for the hi for the face-to-face -face, you need to submit the cv the motivation letter and the portfolio so three things yeah, yeah, and that's okay. that's the main difference. Mm -hmm. If you have any more uh, questions to follow up, please send them over this uh, link that Melody shared with you, tlu.e slash n slash en slash as in English slash ask. Thank you for Thank coming. Yes. Thank you all for being available and uh, hope to see you soon one of these days. See you. Bye-bye.